Good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Yes, I'm late. I'm an hour late getting morning prayer and talk done because I didn't have keys to get to work. I, yesterday, I lost a day at work because I didn't have keys to the landlord's vehicle. I'm not mad. Disappointed, frustrated with people, yeah. But I'm not mad. Flustered, but not mad. Perplexed. The logic of people. I ask for help. And it's a crime to ask for help. I get people wanting to protect what's theirs. And wanting to keep what's theirs in good shape. But what I don't get is the games that they play. Had, had everything worked out last Wednesday night, my car would have been running again. And it would have been running fine. However, it decided to do the same thing again and shut down and run like crap and not want to run. And so I wound up having to take it back to the mechanic. He's had it since Friday. Granted, the weekend is his. And I'm not going to sit there and fault the man for taking the weekend off and taking care of his family and the farm. Because that's what I do on my days off. Is take care of my family and the farm. But there wasn't a word Friday at all in regards to what was wrong with my car. Still. And I get that. And I'm, like I said, whatever this car is doing, it's weird. I don't have a clue because I'm not an HEI mechanic. I don't understand HEI ignition systems or these modern computer engines. Give me a set of points, plugs, and wires, and a gap and a carburetor. I understand it, but you put a car, you put an injection system on it, or a computer that controls the timing, and I ain't got a clue. And I'm a computer person, and I understand technology. But I don't understand the coding that goes into the vehicles. This and this kind of might be a little bit of a rant, but it's kind of where my brain is working right now. And I need to get this off my chest before it eats me alive. Now I'm on my way to try to keep my job and pray I don't get walked out of there fired with everything going on. That's my concern is getting fired because I can't get to work. And granted, I was sick Thursday. I mean, I was, my throat was so raw, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get rid of the dirt that was in my lungs. And so I was exasperating actual dirt, chunks of dirt out of my lungs. That's what I was battling Thursday. And I spent the whole weekend fighting whatever was in my lungs. So, it's been, like I said, it was a battle. But I'm praying that God keeps this door open for me. And that this is what God really wants. Because it's killing me with the mileage, the time, the stress. God hasn't opened a door closer to me. And he hasn't said, this is what I want to give you. Instead, he said, do you trust me? And I have to say, yes, God, I trust you. I trust you wholeheartedly. And I depend on you wholeheartedly. And I'll depend on you forever, O oh Lord. I'll trust you, O oh Lord, in all things. And it's just like our talk with my wife yesterday. But something's got to give. Because the cost of living is so high. That it's almost impossible to build anything up. Because every time I get a chance to build it up. Or I start scrimping and saving. Just so there's an emergency fund. It gets wiped out in one repair. Or two auto repairs. Here comes our bump. Give me a few seconds guys. There it is. But, I, and then people tell me, well, you need to save up for an automobile. Huh. 
easier said than done. I just, the logic behind people, thinking that I'm just wasting my money and just spending it fruitlessly. It's, you know, this is the kind of mentality people have. Oh, well, you can't seem to get another vehicle. Well, maybe you should save money. Maybe you should learn to sp not spend money so much. I wish it was that simple. Every week, my wife gives me a list that I have to get. And it's important that we get it. There's bills I have to pay. My storage building over in Pueblo, I still have to pay. My car insurance, I still have to pay. I just spent $70 yesterday. Almost $70 just to get a birth certificate so I can transfer my license to Colorado. Just so I can register my vehicle again. Because Colorado doesn't recognize a New York enhanced license. So, to make myself legal and to make it proper and to follow the rules, I'm getting my license changed. I'm getting everything done appropriately. But when is it enough? When is the hits not going to come? That's the question we all have to ask. But then I'm reminded again that godly commitment is great. Godly contentment is great gain. It's being content in the situation is great gain. No matter the circumstance, yes, I'm going to voice my opinion. I'm going to voice my frustration. But I'm still going to trust God. I'm not going to deny his power. I'm not going to deny his authority over the situation. I'm not going to deny his will be done. That would be foolish. It would be denying God, period, Mark. And I'm not going to do that. So when I talk about this stuff, it's not that I'm complaining, whining. In a sense that I'm, I don't think God's working. Let's not get that twisted. But I'm trusting God but I'm just voicing my, my concerns and my, and my struggles. Just like David voiced his struggles. Paul voiced his struggles. It's better to let it out than let it fester within. Because when you hide it, it festers and it becomes a sickness that starts robbing you of your health and your well-being. And a lot of people are sick and getting sicker not because of an actual physical ailment, but because they've allowed stuff to fester in their mind and rob them and rob their body of energy that it needs to heal itself. That energy is spiritual energy. And that's where God said godly contentment is great gain. Being content, letting it go, voice your frustrations, but then trust God that he will make a way depending on God to make a way that it doesn't eat you alive because people don't realize how mental health destroys your physical health and your physical well-being if your spirit's sick your body's going to be sick and that is not something I come up with it's a known fact but let us go ahead and close this and pray Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for waking us up today, Lord. Lord, no matter the circumstance, we trust you. We trust your will, O oh God. Whether it be cancer, strokes, migraines, heart attacks, seizures, blindness, mutinous, deafness, O oh God. Lord, whether it's mental health or physical health, Lord, your will be done. We trust you, O oh Lord. You are our rock. You are our shield. You are our shelter. You are our comforter in times of struggle. Lord, we again thank you and praise you. And we ask you to watch over your children today and always. Guide their steps and bless our enemies. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Love you guys. God bless.